Hello there and welcome to the Bicycle Diaries. With the Isle of Wight Randonnée only three weeks away, let's see just how far I can ride. Probably not the wisest decision I've ever made on a bike. Today I'm going up to uh, Boris Karloff's house in Bramshot in Hampshire. So the ride's going to be about 33 kilometres there and 33 kilometres back. I've not ridden in two weeks so this is going to be tough. It's also going to be the longest ride I've done since returning from Mallorca. The last time I did this route was uh, aptly enough on Halloween and I have to admit I found it very hard. I was literally counting the kilometres until I got home and I think it's going to be very similar today. Basically I work on the rule of thumb that uh, if you haven't ridden for two weeks you've lost half of your fitness and my fitness wasn't that great to start with two weeks ago. The route today is going to be relatively tough. There's a few climbs in there, but nothing desperate. It's just going to be the distance. So I'm just gonna plod along, do my best to keep my heart rate down and just try and enjoy it. Unfortunately, despite it being nice and sunny, the weather is really really cold with a very very strong northerly wind so I'm doing the uh, the old school thing of riding into the wind when you're fresh and then trying to have a tailwind on the way home when you're a bit tired. It's cold. Just riding on the first leg of this trip between a place called Finchdean and Bereton. And I'm basically riding out the back of Butter Hill in the heart of the South Downs. It's a little single track road that sees very little traffic but lots of cyclists. Um, it's basically one long climb for about six or seven kilometres at maybe one or two percent. So again, it's nothing desperately hard, um, particularly on the outward leg. And uh, seeing as I'm going to ride back this way, it will be a nice downhill bit with a back uh, tailwind when I'm a bit tired coming home. Morning. Hello. You alright? <laughs> yeah. Morning. Hello. That's the first 15 kilometres done. Uh, I've just arrived in Bereton uh, and the next stage is going to take me onto the town of Petersfield, which is only about four kilometers away. 
and then I'll ride up the old A3 to Lippook and then on to Bramshot. So about another 18, 19 kilometers left to run until I get to the house. now on the main road and this is quite a, 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 a longish downhill normally when I ride this I'm doing 40 45 kilometers an hour but the wind today is so strong it's re really reducing my speed down so yeah hopefully this will be a really nice strong tailwind on the way home Climbing out of Petersfield towards a place called Hill Brow. Um, I'm riding on the old A3, which is the original London to Portsmouth road. Um, once upon a time, it was a really busy dual carriageway, but uh, now it's a relatively quiet B road. Uh, they put a bypass in about 20 years ago. It's actually not a bad climb. We're, we're doing about 4% for about 3 k's and I'm just chugging away. Really trying to keep my breathing under control, my heart rate under control. But it's not easy when I'm talking. Like I said earlier, this used to be the main Portsmouth to London road. And if you were to carry on along this road, about 80 kilometers, you would eventually get to London and cross the Thames via the famous London Bridge. And that's not the Tower Bridge, the one that everyone gets confused with, but the famous one that's in the song about London bridges falling down. And I believe the original one is now in the US in Lake Havasu. Thirty-two kilometres in, and a two-hour ride, which is pretty slow going. But uh, it's it's been a really, really cold ride up to Bramshot here. But we're finally here at uh, at Boris Karloff's house, which is the one you can see behind me. Now he came to live here, I believe, in the uh, early 60s, and he lived here right up until his death in 1968. Uh, I've always been a fan of the the Hammer horror films, um, but Karloff was in the in the Universal ones, which were made in America, and he was actually the definitive Frankenstein back in the 1930s. Now, I personally lived not too far away uh, from the early 80s onwards until about the early 90s, and obviously Karloff had died by then, so I didn't uh, live here at the time he was here. But my granddad. Who also lived in the village uh, did and they were kind of on uh, nodding terms let's say so um, yeah they recognized each other and would say hello to each other um, but unfortunately I never met him but uh, living in the village as I did uh, I could look in the local phone book and there was his wife Mrs Karloff 
all that's left for me to do now is just turn around, retrace my steps and head on home. Hopefully it should be a bit easier with this tailwind. the first of the three climbs on the way home. Climb two and climb three are absolute killers. Approaching hill two of three uh, and basically I have to climb back over Butter Hill and get onto that nice long downhill all the way back to Finchley. Problem is it's an absolute killer. Uh, last time I tried it I couldn't make it. I had to stop, get off the bike and just have a bit of a breather. It was brutal. Today though I'm on my Cannondale which is lighter and has lower gears. Last time I was on my Specialized which is an aluminium frame bike and the gearing was just a little bit higher. So again, I'm just gonna take it nice and easy and do my best to get up this monster climb. made it. By God, that was tough. 17, 18% and my heart rate went up to 97% of my maximum. Absolute killer. One more to go. Just thought I would take a quick breather here as it's quite a significant distance for me. At 56 kilometers, it's officially the longest route that I've done so far this year and the longest route since riding up to Boris Karloff's house last year. Uh, it's also the same distance as the Isle of Wight ran on a short route and approximately half the distance of the long route. Now, judging by the way I feel now after riding 56 kilometers, I could probably do the short route, but maybe not the long route. Uh, I can certainly feel in my legs that, uh, that I've been cycling and my cardiovascular system starting to get a bit taxed now as well. Plus, I can see by my heart rate that uh, it's very difficult to get uh, my heart rate settling between 70 and 80. It's more like 80 to 90 now. And I know that when it starts to do that, that's when I'm getting tired. As 
Certainly I'm picking up a, a headwind now. Not sure where that came from. But it's just in time for me to climb three of three. And this one's bad, but uh, it's not as bad as the last one. Another toughie, about 300 meters at 9%. But I just took it nice and easy. Still very high, but uh, fortunately, I've only got another about a six kilometers till I'm home. If I've got the energy, I'll try and stretch it out to 70 kilometers, which will be another four on the end. So that's 70 kilometers and that was hard. I think I deserve a Stroop waffle now. While I wasn't exactly counting the kilometers down like I was last time, I have to admit that I was jolly glad to get back home. When I finally did get back, I was absolutely shattered and I think I was far more tired than I should have been after a 70 kilometer ride. When I added the four kilometers onto the end there, I, I got back about 66 kilometers and I wanted to extend it to 70 kilometers. And uh, I had to, to um, just divert from my normal route home. Uh, and the minute I diverted, my legs started to really hurt. Uh, and I can only think that this was some kind of psychological thing where my body was saying, no, I don't want to do this, get me home as soon as possible. But I persevered, pushed on, and by the time I got back, like I said, it was 70 kilometers. Even though today's ride was pretty hard, I think I've broken a couple of very important psychological barriers. The first one was actually getting up Kiln Lane out of Bereton, that really tough climb that I did. I've only ever done that about three or four times, and like I said, last time I was unable to do it. But today, I managed it. And more importantly, I've also broken the 70 kilometer barrier. So I now know without doubt that I can ride 70 kilometers. It's not gonna be pleasant, but it's just a question of getting back on the bike, doing it again and again and again, and hopefully it will get easier. Unfortunately, I think it is a little bit too late for the Isle of Wight Randonnée for me, but uh, I, I still will do the, the, the 55 kilometer route and, and that should go quite well. So if you found this film useful, please like and share. And if you'd like to get the most out of your cycling, please consider subscribing for my regular weekly uploads. Thanks for watching.